The story of Sergeant Jonathan Lovett's abduction and mutilation is among the most gruesome and terrifying of alien encounters. The story was even disappeared from the Project Grudge Files because of its horrific nature, as if it never existed. Let's explore. Hi everyone, and welcome to Project Blue Book, where we explore all things unidentified. I am Thor, and thanks for tuning in. There is a plethora of yet-to-be-investigated disappearances of human beings associated with UFO sightings. These disappearances of people in the prime of their lives, healthy and exemplary in every way, disappearing, for instance, in national parks, has been chronicled by David Polites in his Missing 411 series. And then there are UFO sightings where people vanish, as was the case in Lucknow, India, where over 20 people disappeared in 2002 within a 10-mile radius following the sighting of strange lights in the sky and a spider-like craft seemingly connected to them in the air. Since the 1970s, the stories of cattle mutilations have topped 10,000, many analyzed by Linda Moulton Howe and published in her book A Strange Harvest, and they include healthy cattle and horses that seem to have been dropped to the ground at some height with genital area removed, rectum removed, as well as mouth, tongue, and ear. All of this was performed surgically even if official explanations tend to lean towards the animals being victims of prey by wolves, coyotes, and other wild carnivorous hunters. The surgical precision of the incisions was intentionally ignored because they did not fit a normal explanation. Many times, additionally, the body of the animals was completely drained of blood. This brief recap is important as a prefix to the Jonathan P. Lovett story because his is also a story of mutilation, not cattle, but human mutilation, and it has an eyewitness. And before we go further, the record of this story is now in question, as the declassified Project Grudge case file number 13 is missing from the original record, many state because of its gruesome nature and its implications of national security around sensitive nuclear test areas. On a mid-March morning in 1956, at 3 a.m., two airmen of the U.S. Air Force, Major William Cunningham and Sergeant Jonathan Lovett, were dispatched to the fields south of White Sands, New Mexico, the famous nuclear testing range of that era, now an R&D facility. They were tasked with locating fallen debris of a missile test carried out the night before. Both were stationed at Holloman Air Force Base, and reporting to the Air Force Missile Command. When they arrived on their jeep on location, they started scanning the dark wilderness with flashlights, combing a pre-designed grid assigned to them. They divided duties and continued the walk at a few hundred feet distance from each other, close enough to see each other's lights, but far enough to cover an optimum swath of territory. Lovett disappeared behind a crest line, and when Cunningham had not seen him for about five minutes, he started calling out his name and to return, and ultimately began retracing Lovett's steps when he heard high-pitched screams that sent chills down his spine. They were the screams of someone fighting for his life. Cunningham realized the screams had to be coming from Lovett, and he started running, thinking perhaps he got bitten by a snake or that some animal was attacking him. He came to the top of the crest to see a sight he would not forget. About 30 feet away, in the beam of his flashlight, he saw a metallic disc-shaped craft hovering only about 20 feet above ground, silent and stationary. His first reaction was confusion, because it looked like nothing he had ever seen before, and it shouldn't be there. It had no wings, no propellers, no thrust, Yet, it was just hovering in the air silently. But he couldn't think too much about that because he realized something was swirling on the ground right beneath it. They were cords, a cable, extending from the craft to the ground 
and they looked metallic and shiny because they reflected his flashlight. He heard Lovett scream again and now realized for the first time his sergeant was fighting the cord, laying on the ground, with one cord wrapped around his leg, holding onto him captive by the cable. He saw Lovett kicking and screaming for what he felt like a minute until the cable retracted into the vehicle, pulling Lovett first along the harsh surface of the high plateau desert, and then he became airborne, lifting upward. With the cord, he disappeared into the craft. He says they made eye contact moments before Lovett disappeared for good. The disc bottom closed and the craft took off into the sky and the darkness of the night at an incredible speed and without a sound. Cunningham was left stunned in complete silence and darkness of the night. He looked around, he searched around, and there was no sign of Sergeant Jonathan Lovett. This really had happened, and we can only imagine what went through his mind as he stumbled back to his vehicle, sat down, and called it in, through the radio, that Lovett had been taken by an unknown aircraft and that it had left the scene. An airman on duty at the control tower at White Sands did identify a signature that had shown up on radar, but it moved too quickly to be traceable, he said. The area was combed immediately in the morning hours as well as for three days thereafter, while Cunningham was held under questioning at the White Sands Base Dispensary. On the fourth day, news came in from a search party 10 miles away from the original site of disappearance that they had found Lovett, or rather, his nude remains had been found, horribly mutilated. The condition was terrifying. Autopsy showed surgical incisions on his face, cleanly cut from the tip of his jaw to the esophagus and larynx. More shockingly, his tongue and eyes were missing, but that was not all. A part of his jawbone had been sawed off and was missing, like a clean-cut line across his teeth and jaw. And there was more. His penis was completely missing, and the area around the rectum, including the rectum itself, it had all been removed with surgical precision and skill as well excluding the possibility of a scavenging animal or carnivore hunter being responsible, the autopsy report noted. The exact wording for the anus removal was, quote, as though with a plug extending all the way to the colon, end quote. The coroner's notes included more horrific details stating it was impossible to identify a cause of death because his blood had been completely drained away and was not found at the site of his body's discovery, and there was no trace of vascular collapse. What that means is that the blood must have been mechanically removed. The report concluded to state that the body was, otherwise, in an intact condition. Additional oddities were included in the field report from the location of the body's discovery. Several predatory birds had been found dead in the immediate vicinity, suggesting their cause of death was their attempt at eating off of the human cadaver posthumously, suggesting the body had an unexplained and not understood poisonous condition. It was not radioactive. Cunningham was arrested and charged with murder. He was charged with making up the entire story, faking the story of the craft to cover his traits, and mutilating the body himself and dumping it at a distance, all in an effort to confuse the investigation of his murderous act. Let's remember here for context, in 1956, cattle mutilation stories and their signature symptoms all present in the case, including the absence of blood, the draining of the body as well as the surgical removal of facial, oral, rectal, and sexual organs, including the deep penetrating plug like removal of the rectal area. This is all now common knowledge from cattle mutilation investigations and most recently reported in Central Oregon in 2019. These facts were not understood by the investigators into the strange disappearance and mutilations of Jonathan Lovett. A military tribunal rejected the arguments, however, and Cunningham was released without charge. He left the Air Force a short time later. 
It's incredibly difficult to identify and corroborate the story through military records or through the FOIA because, first off, the White Sands testing range in the mid-50s was the epicenter of U.S. nuclear weapons development. Therefore, it was highly secretive. Anyone there would have had a Q clearance, which means they would have undergone thorough psych evaluation as well as being sworn into secrecy and loyalty. Project Grudge investigated this case. It got the number 13. But in the Freedom of Information Act release of Project Blue Book Records, Project Grudge Report 13 is missing. So what's the corroborating evidence? Author of Military Encounters with Extraterrestrials claims in his book to have independent sources confirming the existence of Project Grudge Report Number 13. A second independent source, Milton William Cooper, often labeled conspiracy theorist, he stated on a 1991 Colorado radio program that, quote, our army division have been compromised as a result of these mysterious deaths. And listen to this. A case from New Mexico in 1956 demonstrates how quickly someone can be kidnapped. End quote. This was years before the most reliable source, former Green Berets Bill English, attested to having been assigned the task of analyzing Project Grudge Report Number 13 and that he spent days studying it. To this day, the 600-page report, number 13, remains missing. And I doubt the Grudge reports jump from 12 to 14, just for superstitious reasons. You can watch and listen to this and other podcasts on Project Blue Book, where we explore all things unidentified. Each day, let's practice compassion and kindness. And please subscribe. I am Thor, and thanks for tuning in. See you next time.